I went from living like monks, monks, living out back of the trunk, trunk. The pockets are fat with the monks, monks. Pockets are fat like the clubs. Now I am living like Trump, Trump. Now I am living like Trump, Trump. Mimosas and mosa, mimosa and mosa, mimosa and mosa. The Morris Costa Nostra, pulling up in Tesla Rosa. We charging the debt, discharging the debt. Just charging the debt, we charging the jet. Swipers on deck, ciphers on deck, ciphers on deck. Wipers on deck, wipers on deck. My life is on check, my life is on check. My life is on tubes, my life is a Jew. My life is on you. My wife is on two, my wife is on two. I'm going for three, you know it is me. Bread is the pillar, pillar. The jet is my pillar, pillar. The fez is the killer. The bread is gorilla. gorilla. The flow is Godzilla. Zilla. The lizard a beast. 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 I visit the priest. I visit the priest. And tell him my sins. I, I tell him I'm twin. I tell him I'm Jim. I tell him I'm him. High majesty. High majesty. High as can be. High as can be. I am a mountain. I am a mountain. Peace, family. Welcome to another episode of Underground Railroad Productions. This your host, brother Rich. I'm back. KT, the arch degree. Welcome back, brother. What's going on, Rich? What's going on, family? Well, it's always good to see you, brother. You always come with science. (laughs) You know, you always get straight to the point. I ain't got to worry about no, you know, no nonsense with the brother KT. Nah, I don't dance around. So, um, so that's what's up. Uh, you just came back from London, man. Yes, yes, I just got back from the UK, from from Old York. (laughs) Oh yeah, (laughs) and now I'm in New York. We're gonna be talking about that in our next segment, but I want to real quick. I wanted to talk to you about, everybody knows you for your movie breakdowns, everybody knows you for decoding them, deciphering them, um, showing that it's more than just entertainment, showing how much it affects our conscious and our subconscious mind. Um, Talk to me about, I mean, we got Spider-Man that's out there. Yes. We got, and then there's a lot of controversy with the Planet of the Apes and whether the, you know, it's racist or this or that. I mean, I'm sure you're going to go into that and break that down. Sure. But uh, talk to me about some of these movies. I don't know what you want to start out with, whatever's fresh on your mind. But what's going on with some of these movies that recently came out? And uh, what could you tell the family about them, my brother? Well, before I even start, let me give a disclaimer. (laughs) For all of you who do not approve of us <laughs> wasting our time talking about film, they could just they could just change the just station. Change the station, That's bro. It. Simple, this man. This is not for you. <laughs> so if there's any commentary, anything after the point, <laughs> like it's nil, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> it, don't, it don't count no more. Because I'm letting you know. You know change you, the station because I'm really ignorant on. over here. Yeah, I don't know just, what I'm talking yeah. about. We don't want to waste their time. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, for the people who understand that the first teacher, right, was mama teaching our digestive system how to digest by way of feeding, right, then sitting us on the lap of the elders so a story can get passed down, then transferred over to the village, taking that story, right, and then playing it out, personifying it in the form of a play, Then that converting into a novel or books that in Cambridge, Oxford, Yale, any one of the Ivy League schools utilize to give you a degree to do what? To decode fictitious tales like Charles Dickens, right? Then after that, what happens? Film comes where it's a visual representation, okay? Hollywood represents the wood of a holly tree. All holly trees come from one family, and that family is called Ilex. Okay? I for the I, and Lex for lexicon, meaning visual language. You understand? All right. Hollywood's wood from a holly tree. That's where you make wands from. Magic. What do you do in order to hire actors? It's called casting. Okay? All this magic. So... I utilize these films and these movies to what? To break down psychology the same way any professor that has tenure or anybody like Joseph Campbell who gets global notoriety for does. All right? All right. So let me touch on Spider-Man first. I think that's a little lighter. (laughs) And then I'll close with this apes thing. 
All right. Okay. I, okay. I put that to rest. Marvel Cinematic Universe MCU. Ten years next year. Okay. When they come out with Infinity War, they they'll they'll hit their ten year mark to the date because that's when Iron Man came out. So far, it's not ten years yet. They have already amassed eleven point five billion dollars. Man, they they're over eleven billion. Like they about to hit twelve billion. That's just crazy in 10 years. Who's their flagship character? You would think it's Iron Man, but no. Marvel's flagship character is Spider-Man. Why is it Spider-Man? Because Spider-Man represents Anansi. Kwaku Anansi. Kwaku means born on Wednesday. That's the day the movie came out. All right? Kwaku Anansi, father was in Yame, the sky god. He transcended up to the heavens because he wanted all the stories. In order to be given all the stories, he had to go through some trials, but he triumphed over those trials, and then he was awarded all the stories. Now, what is the stories? Well, we can tap into all of history because the word story, right, comes from the word estory, E-S-T-O-R-I-E, and that means history. So... Stories and history is one and the same. He wanted to know all of his history. He wanted to have all of the history. Where's all the history at? It's in the magnetic field. It's the Akashic record. The magnetic field represents the spider. It represents the internet, the interweaving of all the energies. He wanted to be able to tap into that at any given time. Now, who owns all the stories now? Comic books own all the stories. Okay, y'all might think I'm crazy, but if you look at your nephew, you look at your son, you look at your cousin or your friend who's on them comic books and talk to them, they'll let you know every deep story, tale, cultural reference you make is in these comics, unfiltered. You know what I'm saying? So, Marvel is the leader when it comes to comic books. I'm just sorry, DC, y'all ain't hitting it like that. It's about Marvel. And their flagship character is Spider-Man, and it's Spider-Man because he represents Anansi, the one who owns the stories, and MCU owns publishing. They own character. It's about character development and stories. All right? Now, I just got back from London. I did a couple events out there. One of them was Spider-Man Homecoming Decoded. I broke it down. Funny thing is Tom Holland, he actually comes from over there. So he's over here acting like he's from New York. I was over there giving the breakdown of the movie and they loved it. And what was so dope about breaking Spider-Man down? See, I always tell y'all, why do I do this? I said, I use this medium to connect with the youth so that we have some type of 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 medium to break this information down and when i got over there for the first time i really got to see how effective it's been because i had a good amount of people in my audience but i had a good four or five children in my audience and they participated just out of this world when i say participate i'm not just saying they was like yeah i saw the scene where so and so no These cats was dropping information. You know what I'm saying? Like this one cat was talking about um, um, ionic ionic radiation. Like they was breaking down scientific terms, definitions, and giving like more info to the audience. Like they had to bring the adults up to speed. We had our own rapport going on. You see, and I had to I had to tell the adults to applaud the children. I'm like, yo, do y'all hear what they're saying? Do you see them standing up and speaking to me, looking me in the eye? We're going back and forth. We're the only ones that know what we're talking about. You know what I'm saying? The adults waited till the end when I was done, but them children, they was going in. You know what I mean? Especially my man Malik. Big shout out to Malik over there. So Spider-Man was about what? Spider-Man versus the Vulture. And, and what I got into, um, which I, my whole DVD, which is a four-hour presentation, by the way. Yeah, we took a break. But I, I did a good 320, three and a half. Um, and we have the DVD. The editing is about to wrap up. So we're going to have that available very, very soon. So everything I say right now, I elaborate on way more, you know, in the DVD. But I, I touched on the fact that because he's Kwaku Anansi and Kwaku's born on Wednesday, Ogun, right, who represents 
born on Tuesday energy the day before. That's why Iron Man represented his mentor because Tuesday comes before Wednesday and you have in the Ogun energy and you have in the Kwaku energy. Wednesday deals with Tahuti, but I've already talked about time and time again that the Tahuti energy has to deal with Captain America. All right. I, I proved that. Y'all can see that on all the previous uh, breakdowns that I did. However, there's another aspect to Hootie that exists in Kemet, and that's Jehudi. That's the baboon. That's the trickster. That's the intelligent one. That's the one that is amongst the people. Because remember, Tahuti is a grand deity. Like, he's not just like Osiris and Isis or so on a set. He's, he's beyond that. You know, he's up there with the big wigs. So you don't really see Tahuti amongst the people. Jehudi comes amongst the people. All right. Climbing up and down, right? Trickster, witful, right? And even when you see his body, when he opens up his arms, he got like these wings that are underneath his arms. These are all the attributes of this rebooted Spider-Man, okay? He represents the Jehudi energy because he told Iron Man, he said, listen, I'm the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. I want to look out for the little guy, meaning I want to stay here on Malkuth, on Earth, down here with the people, helping them out, giving them the knowledge, you know, and I went in great detail breaking down how he is that. Um, his symbol, okay, his logo, they changed his logo, and most people might not notice, but that logo is an aromatic ring. Remember, Peter Parker is a scientist, OK, he represents science. He represents that aspect of it. So we're talking about an aromatic ring sitting on here with with the ring of resonance emerging from it. OK, and the most dynamic aspect of that is when you think of aromatic rings in chemistry, the number one aromatic ring is called benzene, which is the name of his uncle. OK, so this whole movie is about chemistry and science electromagnetism and resonance and if you could really pay attention to the 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 tie between him and michael keaton playing the vulture batman broke down in batman versus superman that bat is actually a deity and kemet it's on the narmer palette you see the two women on the top with the horns that is not het haru het haru's horns go outward the inward horns represent a deity named bat so batman represents that deity that's why he's so affiliated with his mother and that's the tie he has with superman both their mother's names is martha so that's what that bat thing is well michael keaton is batman so you have that same underworld energy they represent the same energy on a, on different access now i'm talking about um neck bet and i'm talking about jehudi now how can i reinforce that if you go to kemet to a temple called El Cobb. This is the this is the temple of Jehudi and Nekbet that exists there. Y'all can go check that out when y'all get a chance to. Um, but just to get on, I guess the basic like what was the movie about? The movie had everything to do with patience, <laughs> which they played on at the end with Captain America. The fact that we don't have enough patience to see things through is so like height and reactive and emotional that we can never give our mind enough time to reason. Do you observe or do you judge? And through the reasoning, we can like draw more effective conclusions and we can apply ourselves a lot better to be more effective in life. You know what I'm saying? So they really touched on that theme right there. Also, you know, for the people who've been following all the Avengers and everything like that, we've always seen these heroes, gods almost battling, duking it out in the heavens. We see buildings falling over. We see cars crashing. We saw hype in the explosion. We never think there's people in those cars. There was a mom crossing the street with, his, with her son. Like, when a whole building falls over, how many people are dying? So it's like, yeah, Thor, yeah, Iron Man, yeah, Hulk, y'all saved the day, but did you? You know? So they really focused on the Malkuth element, the Earth element. You know what I'm saying? The Vulture's name is Adrian Tombs, Tomb, like Tombstone. You know what I mean? He was he worked for a salvage yard, meaning what he took all the trash and all the things left over in the city and recycling and gave it new life. 
what do vultures do? They get the bad rap because they're scavengers eating what? Old meat. But do you want to see a dead corpse <laughs> laying in the middle of the road? You know what I'm saying? For days on end? No. Mama takes care of that, too. You see what I'm saying? So they played on some real powerful, um, like, like, uh, like information up in here that spoke to the layman. You see what I'm saying? Like the average person can really get the message in this particular movie because we 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 get so caught up in the metaphysics and blasting out of space. Sometimes we forget about, you know, the things that we need to take care of here, the basic functions. You know, you 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 excel when it comes to um, mental acuity and, and spirituality and things like that. But then when it comes to just some basic things that need to be taken care of down here, like you bypass that. You see what I'm saying? So they they focused on that up in there so that's just me giving just a little bit a taste of the 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 metaphysical elements in the movie as well as some of the mundane as well and like i said psychology you know what i mean um the training wheels protocol this is what i'm gonna close with this is one of the deepest things in the movie spider-man got a suit from iron man his mentor quote unquote and when he tried to hack his suit he couldn't go past a certain point because he Iron Man implemented a, a safety net in his suit called the training wheels protocol, meaning until Spider-Man or Peter Parker goes through certain trials and tribulations to mature and show that he's ready to take on certain responsibilities. He's like, I'm not even going to give you that power because you ain't ready yet. So people want to know why they can't walk through a wall or get over cancer. Either one. You see what I'm saying? And the reason why you can't is because you're not fulfilling basic functions you already are given to the optimum level. So because of that, we all have a training wheels protocol that through our application will be able, you know, to get over. You look like very interesting. You got something to say over but I there. Guess that was very that was very interesting. I know a lot of people gonna be like, okay, all right. Training wheels. Because wheel. yeah, because we were all given, you know how like you you a, com a computer has a program. Yes. So that was our program. Yes. Okay. That's right. That's right. And we we have we have something called redundant genes, Rich. Uh -huh. Redundant genes, meaning like, in order for you to do anything in your body, you need hormones, enzymes, proteins, whatever to do it. Uh -huh. In order to have those things, your genes have to be transcribed in order to make those things. If you look at our amino acids that are put together to make those things... The amino acids codes, like some of them have like five or six codes that code for the same amino acid. Lysine, leucine, like they have four or five different codes that code for the same thing. That's called redundancy, meaning that there's dormant genes inside of us that have not been activated. And they will not be activated until your body knows you're ready for it. How you know? Right. You know, because there's a certain amount of light that comes in. There's a certain way you're thinking, certain way you're living. There's certain things you're putting in your mouth, putting in your body, putting in your system. You see? And then when you get to that point, you'll unlock certain stuff and then you'll have new abilities. You know, that's how that works. So the training wheel protocol was very, very dope. I think that, like I said, there's so many things that are in films that we can use in order to really get the point across to the youth and even people in your peer group and older because people older can be real stubborn. People in your peer, peer group is like, we the same age, like what you know, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? And people younger, they're going to get bored. So it's like, it's good to have things fresh everyone can relate to where you can really convey, you know, some powerful information. Real, before you get into the Planet of the, planet of the Apes, uh, real quick question about the body since you was talking about, you know, the intelligence of the body. Sometimes it seems as though, you know, just through life experience, not even through reading, through reading books, um, your body knows something is going to happen before you consciously know something's oh, going to happen. Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah. if you're about to get into an accident your body is able to uh, you know brace, brace for itself, it right. brace you and, and yes. you don't know but it's like right before it's like your body braces for it and you you're able to withstand whatever amount of pain that's coming to you that's right. so, what, what's going on in, in that particular instance kt my spider sense is tingling <laughs> right that's what you're talking about right okay spider sense is tingling and when when y'all see the new Infinity War trailer that's going to drop when they unleash Thanos, 
you're going to see Spider-Man finally get his spider sense because you don't see spider sense in the movie. You're going to see his skin going to get goosebumps and his hair is going to start to stand up. Okay? What are they telling you? They're telling you we got the spider sense. Why do our goose why do we get goosebumps? Why does our hair stand up in certain situations? And this ties into what my second lecture was about, which was called which was quantum biology. I called it hyperdimensional biochemistry. And I went real deep into the qu quantum mechanics of the body. And we have to understand that like we're in a reality that only exists because we measure it and we give attention to it. All the dimensions that exist, exist all at the same time, which means we have access to all probabilities of what can happen at any given moment, meaning there is a, a reality where you were driving in a car and it got smashed and you feel that ripple. Your hair bumps go up. Your mind puts your body in a state to protect yourself from it. Okay? Your heart beats blood that has iron in it and through the constant beating of that heart creates an electromagnetic field. This is why people have aura and you can feel somebody next to you, looking at you, behind you, if someone got ma malicious intent towards you. You know, something as big as a car accident, remember, you're not the only one involved. It's you, it's whoever's in a car, it's the other car, it's the other people on the street. So what does that mean? That means all y'all light. All y'all genetics, all y'all information, all y'all reality is intertwined at that point, reinforcing each one's experience, kind of giving you a preview of what's to come. You might not see the car wreck, you might not know that's what's going to happen, but you get enough notice to know to brace yourself. Now, you also talked about the slowing down of time. Well, our experience alone only exists because we have the ability to slow down light. OK, light goes what, 186,000 miles per second. Well, when it hits our flesh and our, and, our, and our body, it doesn't go that fast anymore. We slow time down. We slow it all the way down. And that's how we get the experience of the dimension that we in is because of the slowing down of time. Now, when we get in situations like that, where it's life and death, you see what I'm saying, which I'm going to talk about about my London journey also you slow time down so that what you can really see everything that's going on this ties back to movies original movies with 24 frames a second okay now when you watch a movie by like james cameron or or any like superhero film that shows some real great graphics it's like 60 frames a second what does that do if you put more frames per second, which means more pictures, stills per second, that means you'll have greater fluidity and definition through movement, so you can see a lot more. So, our brain, our subconscious, you know, if we go into a movie and they splice a naked scene in the movie or a hot dog in between, you don't catch that. You just be like, yo, I'm about to go get a hot dog. You know what I mean? I'm about to go get popcorn. Your subconscious got it though which means your subconscious picks up every frame. So when you get into that, that, that accident or you, you get in a situation where time slows down, your brain expands, you're able to tap into that ability where now you're able to study each frame. It's, it's, it's the fluidity. So you might be at like 100 frames a second now. So you're catching everything that's going on. You know what I'm saying? So these are all abilities we have. And as long as your training rules protocol is still on, <laughs> you got to do some things in order to unlock it. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. So, so uh, now what about the Planet of the Apes, my brother? Because there's a lot of controversy about this movie here. Talk to me about that, please. So, first, first off, I'm going to say I wouldn't even waste your time really going to see it. You know what I mean? Going out to see the joint, honestly. Um... I saw the first two, they were better. This one was good, don't get me wrong. They had some real good points, but it's like, you know, they just, they're kind of doing the same thing over and over again. Um, your boy, uh, Andy Circus. Circus means ring. Remember, he's addicted to a ring because Andy Circus is Gollum from Lord of the Rings. And we're gonna see him play Ulysses Claw in Black Panther in front of Bilbo Baggins. 
Okay, like we got to understand the whole concept of this whole ring energy. And remember, the ring was one of his things that he used in the first two Planet of the Apes that represent strength and stuff like that. So, but Andy Circus is this guy who can like jump through dimensions because we're looking at Caesar on the screen, but obviously they're not training any any chimpanzee to do this. This is him. This is this character playing this role, but we're seeing the character as some like cybernetic, like holographic entity that obviously is reflecting some type of psychology. So you get this interpretation where people think, okay, they're saying it's racist because they're like, obviously we're the apes, you know, and they're just trying to kill us all and all that type of stuff. And then you got some people like, we ain't apes, they the apes. You know, and in the first one, the guy's name was Jacob, which is Yakub. You know what I'm saying? So the whole Yakub story went down in the first Planet of the Apes. And it's like, listen, this is what it is. It's his psychology. Let's go back to Francis Cress Wilson again, okay? And even Dr. Sabi, like, Sabi would always say, no one's better than nobody. We're just different. You know what I mean? That's what he would say. He would say, they're different, okay? Francis Cress Wilson, same thing, different. She broke it down from a scientific perspective. She left the emotion out of it, okay? She said what? Francis, I mean, the Cress theory of color confrontation, aka ISIS papers, where she went into the fact of their genetic disposition, and they have this innate fear of not being able to survive. So when we look at Planet of the Apes, we're looking at their mind Getting caught between their pagan self and their civilized self. What do I mean by that? Pagans. If you look at the word pagan or hear that in history, it's always seen in a, in a negative light. Like, the pagans are seen as like witches and, you know, these bad folks. But pagans were the individuals that were dealing with nature. The Celtics and stuff like that, that love grass and trees and herbs, and they sung their songs, and they clicked their heels together, <laughs> like fireflies and mushrooms and toadstools. Like, that's what they was on. That's the pagan life, okay? That's what Caesar and all of them represented, because the, the beast that's banging on them in the movie is also him, because you got left and right brain. You got a left brain dealing with logic, tactician strategy you got a right brain that thinks about love community family what does caesar talk about family um um together apes are strong you know everything he dealt with dealt with a village now of course there's elements we can identify with up in there but that ain't nothing for us to identify with that's about him man versus man man versus nature okay and in the movie like they went banging on each other at the end, like the two factions and man wiped themselves out. Like the, 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 group, the monkeys didn't even have to do it. The apes didn't even have to do it. That was just a way of saying nature wins because it was really nature that gave the last blow at the end of the film. It was nature that did it and the apes survived, but they represented an element of nature as well because they were still connected with the land, you know? Um, so yes, genetic recessiveness, genetic disposition. If you feel that you're not gonna be able to reproduce at a rate where your, your, your progeny will be able to develop and keep your genes going, then you're gonna have a boogeyman underneath your bed every single night Especially if there's other groups of people that can procreate and don't have that problem. So it's not even a hate. It's a I got to survive. Okay. And if you're in a surviving state of mind, like what oppressive society, with, when that's banging and being held over somebody's head, they're in a state of survival all the time, which means what? Adrenaline, which means what? Blood is going to be in my arms, blood is going to be in my legs, blood is not going to be in my visceral organs, so I'm not going to be able to breathe right, I'm not going to digest my food right, I'm not going to get nutrients right, my heart ain't going to beat correctly, my brain is not going to get the proper nutrients, blood, oxygen, so I'm not going to be able to function properly, especially if I stay in that mode, and that is the mode that my people are currently in right now. Well, that's the mode that he's always in. Because he's on his genetics. Got to keep the genetics. They got seed banks, bruh. You know what I'm saying? Everything with him. GMO. What do you think Monsanto, Monsanto is about? DNA, genetics. 
I broke down Get Out. What was Get Out about? Genetics. Okay? My man... <laughs> my man Chris from Get Out, though. Like, how he got out and his next movie... Like, he's in the Black Panther, Rich. Did you know that? Yeah, you talked about it. Yeah, like, now he's not just in it. He's T'Challa's best friend in the movie. So, it's like he got all the way out. You know what I'm saying? So, like, these movies is funny. But to, to get back, um, Planet of the Apes is all about genetics, man. And they got some scenes up in there. The most dynamic scenes to me was when Caesar met with Woody Harrelson's character when they when they kept meeting. If you look when they meet, they the the camera pans to the wall and it got written on the wall three times. History, history, history or his story, his story, his story. He even like named off all the great battles that had the decision, like Sitting Bull and Custer, you know, Napoleon, you know, Alexander the Great and all that. And everyone that he talked about had to deal with what? Caucasians and people, indigenous people of the land getting wiped the hell out. OK, these were all the wars that he listed. So that was a way, you know, I guess for us to be able to understand and relate to the characters. But that's something he went through with his own people because they went through slavery. They went through getting beat. They went through all that stuff as well. And that's the reason why they're so extreme at this point, because they like never again. You know somebody who went to federal penitentiary for 30, 40 years or something like that and get out? Like, that's how they, they like, I'm never going back. You know what I mean? If that, even if that means I got to bang on all of y'all, I'm not going to deal with that side of it again. You know what I mean? And you got the saying, in order to beat a monster, you got to become a monster. You know what I'm saying? So you got this monstrous beast-like energy that gets derived from experiences and it's inside their psychology and we see it played out in this film where no it is not black versus white it is caucasian mind versus caucasian mind left and right brain fighting trying to become medium and at the end of the day nature is going to always come out on top because it's all about the netter baby Excellent breakdown, my brother. Leave your contact info for the people who want to get in oh, touch with no you. No doubt, no doubt. So if y'all are interested in the um, Spider-Man Decoded, if you're interested in hyperdimensional biochemistry, those two DVDs, they will both be available um, by the end of this week because the editing just got wrapped up. Um, you can email me at lovegreenlife at gmail. That's L-U-V-G-R-E-E-N-L-I-F-E at gmail. That's L-U-V-G-R-E-E-N-L-I-F-E at gmail.com. You can also go to my website, www.kttheartsdegree.com. I'm on Instagram. It's KT the Arch Degree. YouTube is KT the Arch Degree. And Kamani Tate on Facebook. Um, in addition to that, what did I want to say? Um, there's one more. There was one more point I wanted to make. I think that's it. Is there something else I had to drop? Contact wise, am I forgetting anything? Instagram, Facebook. I said it. I said it. I said all that. That's it, right? I think that's it. I think that's it. I right. <laughs> had to make sure because I'd be forgetting, man. <clears throat> all right. On that note, we signing out. I want to thank everybody for signing up for Patreon. Uh, support the channel. Support independent media. Bringing these great minds like KT that's only going to tell you like it is on these in the independent media outlets. If you haven't signed up, make sure you sign up to show support. We signing out, family. Peace. Peace. Peace, peace, family. This is Brother Rich from UGR. Urging all my viewers and subscribers to help support the channel by donating just $1 to the UGR PayPal account. We appreciate the viewership and support, and we understand the power of a dollar. If you benefit in any way, shape, or form, we ask that you donate a dollar, whether it be monthly, bi-monthly, quarterly, or yearly, so that we can build our brand to compete with the NBCs, the MTVs, and the Foxes of the world. I figure since Kanye could ask Mark Zuckerberg for $1 billion, I got to ask my subscribers to donate $1 so I can make the best possible content possible. 
the main objective of this channel is to inspire you to become the greatest version of yourself. So hopefully throughout the years of you watching this program, you have been inspired to become the greatest version of yourself. If you would like to donate, you could go to www.paypal.com. I went from living like monks, monks, living out back of the trunk, trunk, to pockets of fat with the monks, monks, pockets of fat like the clubs. Now I am living like Trump, Trump. Now I am living like Trump, Trump. Mimosas and mosa, mimosa and mosa, mimosa and mosa. The Morris Coastal Nosha, pulling up in Tesla Rosa, we charging the debt, discharging the debt. Discharging the debt, we charging the jet. Swipers on deck, ciphers on deck, ciphers on deck. Wipers on deck, wipers on deck. My life is on check, my life is on check. My life is on two, my life is a Jew. My life is on you, my wife is on two, my wife is on two. I'm going for three, you know it is me. Bread is the pillar, pillar. The jet is my pillar, pillar. The fez is the killer. The bread is gorilla. gorilla, gorilla. The flow is Godzilla. Godzilla. Yeah. The lizard and beast. beast. I visit the priest. I visit the priest. And tell him my sins. I, I tell him I'm twin. I tell him I'm him. I tell him I'm him. High majesty. High majesty. Highest can be. Highest can be. I am a mountain. I am